All right, here we are again. Um, as I always say, I cannot promise how many of these videos I will get through, um, but I'm very excited for the new season, 2021. Here we are, got through the pandemic, fans in the stands. Um, so obviously, it comes with the usual caveats. Your team will change throughout the season. I can't predict that. This is just me taking a snapshot of your fantasy team at a moment in time. And that moment happens to be right before the first game. So these are my initial impressions. Um, I'll give you, in order to keep this a little short, I will tell you what I like. I will tell you what I dislike coming out of the draft. I will go over things that I thought were mysterious. And I'll give you a letter grade. And yeah, we'll keep it simple. Uh, so first team, also Loda Touchdowns. Still don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah, first team is Brian's team. So let's get started. So you took Austin Eckler, 22 overall in the Austin in the auction draft. You waited some time to take him. Um, I think your patience was warranted. I think Eckler is a top five receiver. Now that being said, he was he did miss six games last year, but in his 10 weeks that he was healthy, he had. 933 yards, uh, so 17 games this year, oof, I could see 850 yards rushing, maybe 600 yards receiving, 90, 90 receptions, so an extra, kick in an extra 45 points on the half point PPR, um, he's a legit top five running back, it's really just a question of does he stay healthy, I think he's a better route runner than he is a runner, he, for me, is like an Alvin Kamara light. Uh, the difference being, though, the Chargers are ascending and the Saints are descending. Um, Justin Herbert looks like he's a franchise quarterback, frankly, last year coming off his rookie year. The best rookie season since probably Andrew Luck. Um, they improved an offensive line that was probably bottom five in the NFL. And turn over almost everyone except the right tackle who they got the year before from the Packers, Brian Balaga. Uh, so that, yeah, they drafted Rashawn Slater. They brought in Corey Lindsley. That offensive line is probably top five in the NFL now. Um, you still got Mike Williams. Still got Keenan Allen. Uh, you lost Hunter Henry. Not a big deal. Still got Austin Eckler. I think Eckler stays healthy. Top five run fantasy running back. Put on the board. 63 bucks for him like that's I mean that's the going rate for running backs I mean you just go through like what everybody spent on people like Najee went for 61 uh, McCaffrey 79 Cook 83 Chubb 71 Henry 72 Kamara 79 like for all those guys Aaron Jones went for 70 Antonio Gibson went for 70 we will get to that Justin um yeah, all, all Jonathan Taylor went for 68. Like, all these guys went for more than Eckler. And I think, you know, some of them are better. Some of them might be worse. Uh, but that's that's a good deal for Austin Eckler. Like, probably a top five running back stays healthy. That's, that's a good deal. That's a good foundation. Uh, you followed that up with A.J. Brown at 43. So you spent 31 bucks on him. Um... Brown is like a weird test case with the Titans. He's low volume, high efficiency. Um, last year, like he came in injured. I know Eileen cut him. He ended up on Hannah's team after a trade, and he was fantastic. Uh, he was top eight in yards per reception, uh, receiving uh, run after catch, TD percentage. And Corey Davis is gone. John Smith's gone. I know they brought in Julio, but this is AJ Brown's like team. Like he is the guy. Every for everything that I think of DK Metcalf, I remember that AJ Brown was the number one receiver on those Ole Miss teams with DK. And as much as I think DK can probably be the number one receiver in fantasy, uh, I think AJ Brown has just as much talent as DK with. So if, another if, caveat, he's got to stay healthy. Uh, that knee is worrisome. He had multiple surgeries over the offseason. Uh, but, you know, injuries 
were prevalent last year and he was still dominant, uh, the the ball, basically the offense revolves around him and Derrick Henry in Tennessee, and I think it will continue to revolve around him and Derrick Henry in Tennessee. I see no reason to believe otherwise. I will say you will get low efficiency games because he's not going to get like I think he only had what double digit receptions in like one game last year. So you're going to get like four or five receptions a game. So he's not going to be a target monster getting you those half PPR points. But he's I think this is the third year. I think he goes for a big big year. I think this is the year he gets like close to 1300 yards receiving because it's his team now and he'll and I'm hoping he's healthy the whole time. I think maybe a little touchdown regression. But again, 31 bucks. AJ Brown, number one receiver. That is fantastic price on the guy. Fantastic price on a player who I don't know if he's a top five fantasy receiver, but even if he's not, he's just outside of there. He's a top ten receiver, maybe, maybe just outside the top five. He's really good. It's just a matter of again, can he stay healthy the whole time? Will he give you it all? I hope so. I think he's just incredibly talented. Um, DK is a physical freak. AJ is more a balancing act. He he's not as physical as DK, but he is. It's like it's like watching someone skating on a football field. He just kind of glides past you. He's just very smooth, and I think he's a. That's just a fantastic get for a set, your second pick. Uh, for 31 bucks, I really, really like that a lot. I thought that was one of the better receiver prices. After that, you took Miles Sanders, literally the next pick, which is interesting. So I remember when you, told, when you took Jordan Howard, when he was in Philly a couple years ago, and I was telling you about Sanders when he was a rookie, and he popped. And I, I knew, I knew... Sanders would be good. Uh, he was the backup to Saquon at Penn State, and he only had a year running at Penn State, and he was a second-round pick. For all of Saquon's physical gifts, Sanders has one thing over him, and that's speed. Sanders does is not he doesn't he doesn't have great vision. He's not able to see the holes as they open up. He's not a great receiver, but man, can he fly! He can just absolutely fly. He's one of the fastest players in the NFL. And I think, I think, I think with Jalen Hurts, it'll be a good thing. A, because the Eagles' offense can't be as bad as it was last year. B, the O-line ought to be better because, again, it can't be as bad as it was last year. And Nick Sirianni, who was under Frank Wright, who took the Bills, by the way, who won a couple playoff games. He has the biggest playoff. Uh, Frank Wright was the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, who backed up Jim Kelly for eight years, and he holds the record for largest comeback win when the Bills were down 38 to 30, 38 to three against the Houston Oilers in 1991. He brought them all the way back. They went 41 to 38. Anyway, Frank Wright, Reich, fantastic coach, fantastic O coordinator when he helped the Eagles win a Super Bowl, and so now we have Nick Sirianni, who was his assistant. Uh, as the coach. I'm not exactly certain what Sirianni has in mind. I hope it is something like what the Ravens run with Lamar Jackson with Jalen Hurts. Do I know that? No, I don't know that. Uh, am I certain of it? I am not. But my hope is that they run something like Lamar Jackson in Philadelphia. I hope they run a lot of read option, a lot of pistol, a lot of like uh, movement and motion, um, giving, basically cutting the field in half for Hertz. My way of thinking is the Eagles will go as far as Hertz is able to take them, with Sanders picking up the slack in the back. So, do I like forty five dollars for Miles Sanders? I don't love it. The reason being is there's a lot of I, as with most running backs, there's a lot of questions. But with Sanders especially, even though I like his talent. I am uncertain exactly what Philadelphia has in mind going into the season. Like, I have projections on guys, and I know what their O coordinators or their head coach is thinking. I got a general idea. Like, we know Mike Zimmer's going to run Dalvin Cook in the ground. Uh, we know that 
Christian McCaffrey is going to be used a lot in the past game in Carolina. I really don't know what Nick Sarani has cooked up for Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders. I don't know if we're going committee with Boston Scott and Jordan Howard and they took Kenneth Gainwell from Memphis, who's a good pass catcher. Anyway, I don't know. So that's what makes it kind of risky. I'm not really sure how comfortable I would be spending 45 on Sanders, especially knowing some of the deals that came out for second running backs. So I thought that was a bit of a reach. I like the go for talent, though. So I like the risks just because he's a third-year back. I think he can get – I think he's the workhorse there. I think he has a lot of speed. I think the O-line's got to be better than it was last year. I mean, last year, he was what? A top 20 back? I think he can be a top 10 back, uh, especially because he's only 24 and he's a decent receiver. Um, but I think Sarani's going to lean on the run, especially with Jalen Hurts. My hope is they adjust to something like what Lamar does with the Ravens. And if that's the case, I think Sanders will pop. Uh, so I don't love the price of 45 but I appreciate the risk. I think these are the type of risks in the past that you probably wouldn't have taken. You probably take like a Chris Carson who who did go for a decent price. But quite frankly, I think Sanders has more talent than Carson, and I think he has more upside than Carson. And I think he could make he could make your season, uh, especially with Eckler. They could be two top five fantasy backs if things break right for them. Do I know that they will? I don't. But that's more to do with I don't know what kind of scheme they're running than less to do with I don't trust Miles Sanders because I do. Uh, he's just, if you get him in space, he's gone. And he's the first player I can think of at running back I can really say that about since Chris Johnson. So I understand the aggressiveness on him. I don't know how I feel about it, but I, when in doubt, I usually lean towards the aggress the aggression. So don't love the pick, but I do like it, and I I can understand it. I can equate to it, and I I think it plays well with the rest of your team. So after that, we got C.D. Lamb, C.D. for 29. Um, so, tale of two seasons, C.D. with Dak Prescott and the Cowboys offense coming back from big, big games where they were down a lot. CD with Andy Dalton when they weren't so great. So, I mean, CD had a good year last year. You know, he had over 1,000 yards. He had 85 uh, catches. Uh, I think he was like, what, a top 15 receiver with Prescott? But then after his injury, he went back. I think this is more a projection pick because, I mean, CD's – what, the slot receiver still? Because Gallup's the number two on the outside to Amari. So we're really, I think, we're pushing it. Because I think he can be a top number one receiver. I just don't know how many of those top receivers Dallas can really, like, bring out. I think Gallup's going to take a step back, obviously. Um, but maybe CD has more talent than Amari. But push comes to shove, Amari's been in the league quite some time very good player so I think CD will have another thousand yard season I think he'll have probably around like I don't know around the 85 catches or so I think what kind of hurts him is just so much competition uh Michael Gallup Amari Cooper Ezekiel Elliott Tony Pollard Blake Jarlin like I'm just naming off guys so if he was, like, the number one guy there, he could put up possibly, like, DeAndre Hopkins' numbers. He's really, really talented. Uh, but he needs things to go right. Dak has to stay healthy. Um, and they got to feed him. And I am uncertain if he will get the target share to be able to do that. I am hopeful of it because I like his talent a lot. But he's probably only, like, a five or six reception guy. So you're really going to be feasting on, like, can he get some big plays with his speed. And, you know... Maybe? I don't know. But 29 bucks for him. Don't hate it. Um, don't love it. Uh, but, you know, I think it's it's upside. And again, we like the upside. He's a second-year receiver. He was a first-round pick. Maybe he takes over for Amari and he's the number one. Worst-case scenario, he's a very, very good slot receiver, and he's probably 
a, this, a rock solid number two receiver. Best case scenario, he's a top five receiver. Like, it's great upside. So, taking risks. I like it. Uh, next, we got Cortland Sutton. Sutton's in a weird place. He's dealing with Jerry Judy. They've been changing quarterback. They draft a running back in the second round. What are we doing in Denver? Well, the way I see it, I think Sutton is a tremendously talented receiver. Two years ago, he was a top 20 receiver. Um, he's super reliable. I think he what only he only had two drops um, that whole season. They just had a hard time getting in the ball in the end zone. And that's really like, despite the other guys like, oh, they drafted Noah Fan and KJ Hamler and Tim Patrick and Melvin Gordon still there, I suppose. I think Sutton, people don't realize how good Cortland Sutton is. Cortland Sutton could be an elite receiver. Uh, Cortland Sutton is only 25. Cortland Sutton in a better offense would be, he'd be a bona fide number one. Um, and But people don't think of him that way. If Justin Jefferson is so great for Minnesota, yeah, Cortland Sutton is the Justin Jefferson before Justin Jefferson. People just don't know it. And Sutton was a sleeper on my board. Sutton is someone that I really like. For as much as I don't love the C.D. Lamb pick, I love the Cortland Sutton pick. Cortland Sutton for $11.94 at is a fantastic value because really he only falls that far because of situation. And if Teddy Bridgewater can do with Denver what he did last year with Carolina with like DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel, who quite frankly I think are less talented than Cortland Sutton, then Sutton could be a monster. I think for as much talent as CeeDee Lamb has in the Cowboys, Sutton – is maybe not as talented, but he is just so rock solid. He is so trustworthy. He does is he's one of the best route runners in the NFL. He never drops the passes. He always knows where to be. He gives a hundred percent on every play, of every down of every game, no matter the score. He is so reliable. And while I don't think he'll put up as big numbers as CD simply because Denver doesn't like to throw the ball as much as Dallas and they won't be in that many barn burners, I think that, you know, after last year's injury injury plagued year, I think Sutton's going to come out and he's going to have a good year. I think he'll be a thousand yard receiver. I think he'll be a very good number two receiver. If Teddy can do what he did in Carolina with Denver, then Sutton could be more. And I like this pick a lot. I really, really like Colin Sutton a lot. I think he's a tremendous player. And he's one of the players who are in the NFL that I don't think gets enough attention. And I'm I'm very pleased that someone took him and got a good value on him. Like $11 on Colin Sutton is a great, great price. And I, I was surprised to see another young, high upside receiver on your team. But you, you, that's basically the gist of your draft. Um, I'm not going to go too much more into it. Those are all the things I liked um, about your draft, which is essentially, again, I just did the four first four picks. Um, some things I thought were a little weird, I guess maybe didn't like. You waited You waited quite a bit on quarterback. You took Tannehill at 130. I mean, obviously the value's great, three bucks. I think Tannehill's probably a back-end, top 10-ish, top 12-ish quarterback. I really... Am surprised though. I guess you could say, I I agree with waiting on quarterback, but I am surprised we waited so long. I mean, Jalen Hurts went for three bucks, ten ten spots higher. I mean, heck, Kyler Murray went for like what? Like he went at like ninety six, so maybe like forty, maybe and eh, like thirty five spots higher. But he only went for five, so like. While I appreciate people waiting on quarterback, and I don't disagree, like, you don't have to pay a lot on quarterback. I think also it's important, though, to just be like, go after a quarterback you think is going to break out. And I was surprised with Brian, specifically you, you didn't do that this year. I know Tannehill's safe. I know he's a solid quarterback. I like him. I think he's a top 10 quarterback. I think he'll be good. But there's no, like, high upside. Like, you took Josh Allen. 
Uh, you took Patrick Mahomes. You you took you, you took Darnold, and that was bad. But I, we all kind of knew Darnold would be bad. Well, at least I did, because uh, Adam Gase. Sorry, but you know, swinging for the fences at quarterback. There's nothing wrong with it. I was just surprised. I know you don't believe in Jalen Hurts, but like three bucks, like we're talking like an extra dollar, like. I don't know. I think he could have splurged a little bit on the guy because, you know, the possibilities there. He's a top five quarterback just based on running. And I, I can't say that about Tannehill. I think Tannehill's good. I think he's rocks. He's solid for you. But I don't love it just because, like, I you took so many, like, Eckler's 26, A.G. Brown's 24, Miles Sanders 25, C.D. Lamb is 23, and Cortland Sunnett's 25. All those guys are 26 and under. And then we got Tannehill. Like, yeah, I like Tannehill, but you're not going to get any rushing with Tannehill. So I didn't love that. I also can't say that I love like taking some of the defensive players, just splurging a little bit on two and three dollars. I like. I didn't really love um, like the back way way back end. You got some steals. I liked Ramondre Stevenson out of New England. I like um, Brian Edwards. I think he could be a number one in in Vegas, depending on how things break there with Derek Carr and all that. Um, but no, like, I really like what you did. You spent, obviously, a majority of the money on those first five players that I just mentioned, and they're all on my high list. They're all high upside. They're all very young. And if the key with you is health. Um, AJ Brown, obviously multiple surgeries this off season. Um, Austin Eckler hurt last year too. Corwin Sutton did not play. Uh, yeah. So there's some risk. I don't know if all five of them can stay healthy for you the whole season. 17 games is a lot, but I like, I legitimately like your depth. Like Landry's good and half PPR. Uh, Rager's decent dice roll. He ought to be better with, um, with Hertz, though, it's kind of weird you have Sanders and Rager, but I guess I can't really talk. Um, Pollard is good. You can use that as a piece, maybe to trade for something from Sarah. Cough, cough. Um, I'm, again, I'm surprised we didn't go roll the dice on a, on a young ascending quarterback, but I guess at that price point, I can't argue too much with it, but I would say that would be the one thing. I'm used to you rolling the dice on someone, and you didn't roll the dice. You just took the safe bet but hey you know what you knocked it out of the park with the with your draft i think legitimately this is your best draft you've ever had i think after all this time after coming after starting in the league and coming in second place and then last year coming in second place again and just like constantly figuring things out like we know everyone in the league knows you're one of the best when it w comes to working free agency. You're one of the best at going through the trades and doing everything during the season. It's always a matter of, can he build a team coming out of the draft that can really push, that will give him the foundation to go for a championship? And I think I think this is it. This is your year. Um, will you do it? I don't know. But this team is set up to be excellent. This team has the upside to basically win every week if it really if everything goes right will it i obviously i don't think so but the team is fantastic and with two week playoffs this year i think you will it'll be very very difficult to beat you two weeks in a row so yeah no you are my favorite you are my number one team this year i give you an a for this draft you everybody's young they're hungry they're good we're just worried a little bit about injuries, but hey, AJ only missed a couple games last year. Eckler missed six. You know, Cortland missed the whole season, but you took him at 94. I can't really argue too much with that. If you're going to roll the dice and use the last bit of money on Cortland Sutton, I think that's a very wise thing to do. Um, yeah, you're my number one team, Brian. Don't fuck it up. All right. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get demonetized by YouTube for saying that, but yeah, this is your time. So. Hats off to you. That's an A draft. Good luck this season.